So depreciation is not a formula. Depreciation is perception. That's what depreciation is. So if you are concerned about high depreciation rate of MG and LDV and Havel because they are less known, less prominent in Australia, plus have the stigma of Chinese car, then don't buy one. Should you buy an MG or LDV vehicle in Australia in 2022 if you are concerned about really scary car depreciation rates yeah, that we are all having to deal with? As we know, it's a fairly scary perspective to buy a new or almost new vehicle and then see like half of its price evaporate metaphorically and speculatively over the first one or two years of its ownership. Is this true? Does it matter? Hello and welcome back to the channel, I'm Dimitri, this is MG Owners Australia. You know the topic of the conversation today, if you're interested, give it a like so that I know that I'm talking to you about something that does interest you, because I'm trying to create periodically content that entertains me and is useful for you, my dear audience. Subscribe for more. Let's just get kind of the obvious things out of the way. So yes, car depreciation is probably the biggest expense that you are going to have with your vehicle, whether it's MG, LDV or any other brand. Everything depreciates and the cars that cost a lot more, they depreciate a lot more in terms of losing the value a lot more. So it's not like you buy a luxury vehicle of a non-MG, non-LDV, non-Chinese, let's call it bluntly, brand in Australia and you're protected from depreciation. No, my friend, let's just address the elephant in the room. Toyotas depreciate, Volvos depreciate, I don't know, Volkswagens, Jeeps and so on and so forth. Everything depreciates. On average in Australia in 2022, as soon as you buy the car new, any car, any car, it loses 10 to 15% of its value instantly as soon as you drive out of the dealership. I don't know if it's true or not, we will talk about the reality of it slightly later and if you don't want to hear about this theory you can always use the chapters down below and fast forward. 10 to 15 percent, poof, gone as soon as you bought the car and drove it out. New. New car. Yeah. Another 10 to 15 percent they say um, on average is gone by the end of the first year of ownership. So with that in mind, virtually any vehicle, some more than others, lose between 20 and 30 percent of their original new vehicle price in the first year of ownership. First year of ownership is considered to be the main indicator. If you're looking for any data, any insight, it kind of makes no particular sense looking beyond the first year. They are looking just at the vector of this depreciation and beyond that, I would say, short, short version, my friend, do not worry yourself with this too much. Yes, some cars, some models specifically, they simply retain their value because people believe that they deserve more value. And that belief that almost, it's almost a pseudo-religious kind of belief, right? It's something that you cannot fight against. That winner in Australia, uh, head and shoulders above everyone else, every other kind of, uh, kind of vehicle manufacturer, MG, LDV, doesn't matter, is Toyota. Is Toyota. The, the most, the vehicle that statistically retains its value the most is Hilux, Toyota Hilux Ute. Um, and apparently it only loses up to 15% of its value in the first year. Okay, go figure, no other brand, no other brand can boast that. Certainly not MG, certainly not LDV and no other brands. Why is that? Is it because Toyota is still so damn brilliant and so unbeatable and unbreakable and Hilux is just so damn amazing. No, it's just because Australia, let's face it, brace yourself for impact. Australia is full of bogans, okay? Australia is full of bogans and they either have a ute or they want a ute. Hiluxes are supposedly unbreakable, yet they are breakable, more so breakable than a lot of other cars. They offer you only bare bones kind of internal conveniences of life type of stuff and generally not that much fun to drive Toyotas. Sometimes the brand, its actual true value, true quality, what it actually can give you, it has nothing to do with how it's perceived. So when we talk about depreciation really, and here we slowly get to MG and LDV uh, as brands, yeah, I think it has nothing or not that much to do with the car itself. 
Cars are very different to how they are perceived. Hilux is breakable. Toyota is not that fun to drive. Is not even that high quality anymore. It used to be, but it not anymore. It's a it's a massive, ingrained, massive marketing campaign. Okay, so in this kind of sense, I can tell you that you should never set yourself up for a failure trying to compare depreciation or perception of MG and LDV on the market versus something like Toyota. Do you know what I'm saying? So if you don't do that to yourself, then you can have straight away very realistic expectations from your vehicle when you're buying it. Yeah. So I am telling you that as an owner of two MG vehicles, one LDV vehicle, researcher from the private ownership perspective into MG specifically brand most of all, but some close brands such as Havel, such as LDV, um, I can tell you that these cars are of decent quality, just as good as probably medium line of what you expect from other cars that don't cost hundreds and hundreds upon thousands of dollars, which I simply do not have a sample size of to compare the quality of this to the quality of that, you know? They are decent cars, they will last you fine, they will be sold on the market just like any other vehicle, and if it comes to quality and what the car gives you and what kind of st stuff happens there, it will you know, it will cost as much as people want to pay for it. So depreciation is not a formula. Depreciation is perception. That's what depreciation is. So if you are concerned about high depreciation rate of MG and LDV and Havel because they are less known, less prominent in Australia, plus have the stigma of Chinese car, then don't buy one because depreciation rate of those cars unscientifically i'm telling you but from common sense perspective will always be higher and you'll be setting yourself up for a fail of course people will feel like their mazdas hondas toyotas obviously will retain more value will be you know will be depreciating slower simply because people know them and they're like oh well that's a more established brand and probably a little bit more high up class yeah not necessarily when it when when it comes to the actual realistic assessment of what this car gives you and your family and how long will it drive you without any without asking asking for anything right but that i hope that i hope that 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 is pro that is probably the main thing that i wanted to talk to you about what did you expect that i would give you complex formulas that are going to justify why and why mg possibly is depreciating faster there is no technicality to it it is just a psychology of the market. Any goods, any, uh, you know, any vehicle in this particular case is simply worth as much as people are willing to pay for it. So the Australian market in 2022 certainly sees a lot more MGs on the roads. And I suspect that therefore psychological depreciation of this car is going to be less and less so. So people will be willing to accept mentally that a one, two year old MG HS, MG ZST is worth something sensible rather than like, oh, dump the price, it's a Chinese car, it's about to fall apart. No, it won't. No, it won't. It won't fall apart, okay? But will it ever be a Toyota Hilux? I don't think in your or my lifetime. I don't think in your or my lifetime. And if you're not, again, setting yourself up for a fail to expect that, then you will not be disappointed because there is nothing to be disappointed about. These cars come at 20 to 30% cheaper price tag and sometimes even more so than a lot of their counterparts and same classmates, let's call them, in the same type of SUV 5-seater, SUV 7-seater, whatever, whatever you wanna, whatever the segment that the car you're looking in. They will always be cheaper. They already paid you forward for that psychological handicap, let's call it psychological handicap of the fact that the car is perceived as if it's cheap but it's not and the more we go into 2023 look at the new Havel models that are coming to the market Mwah, i want one they are fantastic cars they are fantastic cars mg is certainly specifically mg in australia is making a lot of noise and a lot of effort a lot of presence kind of uh, in front of the eyeballs of the average australian bogan on TV, running ads during the major TV shows and that kind of stuff. I admire that MG. I still think that your lineup of vehicles in Australia sucks. It's boring. It's boring compared to your own MG Moto counterparts in other countries. It's boring. 
but I suspect that the problem with that is just that they're trying to gain more ground and that will allow them to introduce more models and therefore create a bit of a more fragmentation of the models for themselves so that they can support that fragment, slightly more fragmented MG landscape. I get it. I get it. So I hope that this is a, it ended up being again one of these unscientific but hopefully just a light bulb moment, honest private ownership perspective on depreciation of the cars in Australia. What drives depreciation? And how does MG or LDV as, yeah, less popular at the moment in 2022 brands in Australia, how would they feel in that depreciating landscape where everything depreciates, okay? So, final words here. Do not judge the book by the cover if, you, if you're if trying to, you know, do not always judge the book by the cover when it comes to vehicles and other kind of things. Go and test drive it. Go and have a conversation with the person before you judge them. I think that that's just a generally healthy, positive, friendly suggestion that I can give to my, to my audience. Give me a like, talk to me in the comments down below. Always love talking to anyone who is not a troll. And I'll look forward to speaking with you about something else about... Whenever that comes, I stopped pumping out videos just for the sake of pumping them out. When I have something good to talk to you about, like this topic, I think, um, that's when a video is coming. Subscribe for more, talk to me in the comments down below, I'll talk back. See you later, bye for now.